Sorry, we're closed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I got a rant for you guys today, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna get right into it. First off, you're seeing this on YouTube. If you're not and you're watching somewhere else, I have a red size hat on, and that's solely because of the fact that we just bought that new bar, McSwiggins, and we turned it into a red size bar. Yeah, they they this is like Giants Jets area. Somehow they have a good Patriots crowd, so turn right into that skid, and we're gonna make it a red size bar. But I don't really wear baseball hats unless I'm playing the game of baseball, so we're gonna take that off. The rant today is, I guess, about a couple things. Um, it, it's hard to put an exact how how I want to go about this. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee here. The thing is, there is in the bar world. There's two things I want to rant about today. One, when you're giving a price to someone. Um, about buying a place. That's that's one thing. The other thing is we talk about free drinks or how you run your bar. Now I'm going to rant about both of them. First things first is the how you price out your out your business. When you're dealing with people who are, I consider a lot of owners in in this town at least, um, as uh, you know, friends. Um, if not friends, they're coworkers, essentially colleagues in the same industry, all fighting the same battle, making trying to make a living in the in the bar and restaurant industry. With that being said, it's when you give a valuation on a business. When you like, say you mean you sat down, right? You sat down and, and you said, "Hey, listen, I think my bar is worth uh, one hundred forty one hundred forty million dollars." All right. $140 million. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, shit. No fucking way, bud. I might say that. In the beginning, before I see any financials, before I see any of the business, I'm like, you sure? okay, sure. As long as you get the numbers to support it, you know, I'll buy it. Sure, why not? Now, obviously, $140 million, this is a made-up number. I have to go get some serious funding for that. But when you, when you get a valuation of a business, right now, I'm going to go to you um, I'm gonna go to you, and I'm going to t- I'm gonna you know come to you as a friend. You have someone that's gonna deal with you as a f- on a friend level, especially if you're a colleague. Um, but if you give a crazy crazy number, and then you send me your financials, and it it shows me that this is a crazy crazy number, you lose the friend status. You lose the respect of the colleague status of I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to shoot you straight, and you're just going to now we're, we're diving into business, and that's fine. If you you know a lot of people say there's a quote, you know, not a quote, but she had a friend of mine say it today. You know, listen, I don't want I don't want to lose a friend over business. Business is business, of course, but uh, you know we, let's do this the right way. You once you've done that, say the 140 million dollar number, and the business after looking at the financials is is maybe worth 80 million. Listen, it's just, you know, you've thrown out the, hey, let's let's deal with each other as friends now. You're now pulling straight business, Pat, or whoever's dealing with that. You're straight business. This is no longer, a, this is, you're trying to screw me and see if I will come in and buy your, your thing at some crazy valuation. You're essentially, to me, you're telling me, you know, Pat doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, doesn't know what the hell he's doing. I'm going to see if I can screw him over. With that being said, that might not be your intention. You might just be saying, hey, listen, I'm going to try to go in at a high price, see what he says. But you're still, in my view, you're trying to get a ridiculous price. So you are, I'm trying, you're trying to get me to be dumb and take it. So in my respect, again, I won't take it personally, but you've got, you're going, you're no more French, friendly, ha <laughs> yeah, listen, maybe I can do this for you. No, no, we're, we're straight business now. And you're going to get a, a response on. So now let's put it this way. If let's say I'm willing to pay 80 million on friend level, I'd be like, listen, man, 80 really is the top line I can do. I can't do anymore. This is what the business is worth, man. This is all it is. And we have a nice conversation. Let's see what we can come up with. Now you're gonna get, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna counter your $140 million deal with 50. 
and I'm, I'm going to go $90 million under what you think it's worth. Because now we're in negotiation. We're in the business world now. Listen, sorry, bud. You're trying to screw me. I'm going to try to screw you. And that's not really how business gets done. But this is, the, this is, the, this is what you've started this with. It just it, it it's it's the way the world works, and it's it's unfortunate that some people handle business this way. But that's how business handled. Honestly, I've had this thing happen to me in my actual life. I had a had a business be um, be uh, a business uh, try to try to be sold to me, and just a crazy crazy valuation. I didn't even ask for financials. I didn't counter. I just said no. I just moved on. Guy never heard from me again. Because it was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous price. If I can go and tell you your your business is ridiculous at a ridiculous price without even asking for financials, you know you're being an asshole. So again, a lot of people do this way, and it breaks businesses. And you know, you got to put someone in a really uncomfortable spot in order to be able to even get that type of deal. So you know, be careful with if you're if you're a business owner, you're trying to sell your business. Be careful with what you say as a owner. I actually saw it in the social media world when I'm trying to get. Um, when I'm trying to get uh, uh, deals done, uh, as far as like you know, you know, you know, marketing pe- marketing uh, products and things like that for my own social, I should see it. If I came in when I didn't wasn't trying to screw companies over, I said no. I was trying to learn the market, learn what it was. But when I come in at a high number, I realized oh, you know, if you came in at a high number that was end up being ridiculous, people didn't want to work with you anymore which I now get. I don't do that anymore, but I didn't know those were numbers that, that were high at the time. So I was kind of trying to feel it out. But it was crazy. Now you learned that. But, you know, you're, it is borderline insulting that you think that I'd even consider that type of deal. And, you know, it, again, we're in a position here where it's just, it's dumb. It's a dumb, uh, ju- you know, dumb thing to try to pull off on, on that type of valuation because if you're dealing with anyone that has any knowledge, it's, it's just not going to work out. The other thing I want to rant about today, I guess it's not a terrible rant because I stay pretty calm. But one of the reasons I had to stay calm is my microphone sucks. So if I start yelling, um, it really is just bad sound quality. But the other thing I want to rant is free drinks. Free drinks in a bar. How you run your bar. And I'll give you a great example of the two bars that I own right now. McSwiggins Pub and Green Rock. Free drinks is often, especially as uh, as you talk about older bar owners, free drinks is often 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 looked at as a fun business. You're just throwing drinks away. You're throwing you're giving the bar away, et cetera, et cetera. I have a lot of it in town here in Hoboken where you have people think that if you give away free drinks, you're you're an idiot that doesn't know how to run a business. Perfect example is myself. I can use myself, which is such a great way to use this as rant. When I first came to town, I was going to all different bars. I didn't have allegiance to anyone. I remember going to a bar called Mills Tavern, McSwiggins, Cadillac Cantina, Green Rock. I was going all over the place. I had, as a young 20-year-old, 22, 23, 24, 25-year-old, you know, I'd signed for a million dollars out of college for the Red Sox. I had a good chunk of change. I was ready to spend it. I was locked in, absolutely locked in to spend some money at, at, at these bars. And I expected to be charged for things. Of course. <sighs> I, of course, expected to be charged for things. But there's one place that I thought took care of me, whether they did or not, and it was Green Rock. And I spent years and years and years Doing the Green Rock way, and and now buying Green Rock, another bar, kind of like Cantina. I went there two years in a row, three years in a row, maybe oh, a lot, a lot. Charged me for almost every drink I took. Not a problem, right? I ordered the drink. I should pay for the drink. You know, that bar doesn't even exist anymore. They were reliant on the bartenders and the people there, as as why people were coming there. Those people ended up leaving, go to a different bar, and now the bar, it's a new bar. Completely reliant upon that. People change at Green Rock all the time. We're not reliant upon the people. The people are very important. We try to hire good people, but we're not reliant upon them. Green Rock is Green Rock. And it's not because we give away free drinks, but we have the illusion, not even the illusion. We actually do. We take care of our customers. McSwiggins. I went to McSwiggins 
um, years ago, years and years ago. I was like 23 at the time. And I bought, there's this famous drink there called Phoenix Bomb. And I, I, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. They do like dry ice. It should be an expensive shot. Let's just pull, pull you know, call a spade a spade. It should be an expensive shot. Um, it's a whole production. And uh, I bought them and my bill was through the roof. Um, and it, as it should be, honestly. But through the roof. I very rarely went back. If, if ever. And it's not because I wanted a free drink. Do I think that I should have gotten a, probably a free drink after spending that much money? I guess yeah, it's a little bit of entitlement. But this is the psychology of the customer. Would you rather, I probably spent, let's just call it, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 at Green Rock over the next year. The cost of that business, let's say they gave me, instead of maybe I should have spent 16000 Maybe I got $1,000 in that year worth of free drinks. Would you spend $1,000 to make 15? Well, let's say you're doing you say you're doing margins, right? Say you're doing 30% margins in the bar business, 15,000. You know, you're talking now you're doing 30% margins, so 5 grand. Would you spend 1,000 to make 5? Turn on investment is 500%. It, if you don't think of it that way, you're not running a real business. You want to throw everything over and get and get everyone and can't give a dime away, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's fine. But you don't look down upon people that or bars or restaurants that do it. Green Rock is one of the longest standing bars in town. And I can promise you, if I'm thinking about all the bars in town, it's the longest standing bar in town that has stayed popular throughout the last decade. And really popular. I mean, let's just call it. They know what they're doing over there. Or I guess I know what I'm doing over there. So, you know, when you when you talk about places, you know, you might have a successful way about it, but don't look down upon it. Listen, I don't I don't look down upon it the way other people run their businesses. I don't care, honestly. Good luck to you. I might try to find them. If, if I don't think you're running it the right way and I think I can make more money, I might try to buy it off you for cheap. But, you know, it's, it's amazing to me how everyone gets on their high horse about how they run their own bars. And, and when we're really counting the numbers at the end of the day, who's doing better? You know? We talk, we talk about bars that give great deals. They might not give an ounce away of liquor for free, but all of a sudden you're doing a... A crazy happy hour where every price, every drink is super cheap. And okay, you're not giving anything away, but I just gave away four green tea shots away to a, to a, to you know over that how many hours that was cost me probably four green tea shots probably cost me twenty cents, but I just brought in how much full price drinks, whereas you're you're getting hit on every drink you you sell. There's different ways of doing things. So when you when you look at these things, and again, it's when we talk about rants. I was, you know, I got, I got idiots just calling me and telling me stuff that they just don't have any clue what they're talking about. They think they do and they just don't. And then on top of it, you said you get valuations of businesses. I actually had a guy one time. This is how you you do it if you want a crazy number. You say I asked a guy one time, how, what would you do? What would you sell your business for? Ah, you know, I want a few more years left, man. Honestly, I did to sell for a crazy number, like you know, ten million or something like that. Now that's the way to do it. You tell the guy it's a crazy number because it is. And if they're so willing to pay it, oh, okay, well, listen, we'll talk. But you throw something out in hopes that this guy's going to be an idiot. Like it would cost it would cost insane no money for me to to uh, sell Green Rock right now. And that's what I tell the person. Listen, no. It's going to cost you $90 million to buy Green Rock. I, mean, I want this business for the next 50 years. And how much money we're going to make off it in the next 50 years, you got you got you got to pay up for it. You got to give me 40 years for it, you know? Just crazy stuff. So it's just it's frustrating when you have all these people doing these things and they just they just don't know what they're doing as far as they think they're trying to take one over on you and they're not. And then on top of it, you think, oh, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's just some idiot baseball guy running a bar. Guess what? We're, no, we're not. And it's a common misconception here in Hoboken, which has allowed me to take advantage of some as far as getting and going out and trying to wheel and deal with with different bars in town. But let's not digress. Guys, I hope you have a great weekend Come to McSwiggins. I'm going to be there on Friday, probably there on Saturday. 
going to have some fun. Um, but yeah, come by, enjoy your weekend. And until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Thank you so much for listening to the Sorry We're Closed podcast. Go subscribe to our email chain over at thepatlight.com and follow us on all social media. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.